Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. At this time, we're going to discuss the remounting of the completed or processed complete denture uh, onto the articulator after the uh, processing has been done and the occlusal changes which take place during processing uh, can be adjusted. Now there are, are two methods of doing this, or even more than two methods. Uh, one is the, uh, the method you will use in the clinic which differs from the method that we will use in the laboratory. Now uh, this being our patient again, and we have our completed upper. Everybody has a completed upper denture, and they should fit nicely back on to the mannequins. But unfortunately, the maxillomandibular relationships aren't good enough to use uh, as an exercise, so we're going to do it a little differently. Clinically, this is what we do. By removing only the flash, not necessarily finishing the denture at this time, we go to the patient's mouth, try in the dentures, and adjust the borders and so forth until that we are satisfied that um, the borders and the tissue surfaces of the dentures are satisfactory but the occlusion probably is not because of the processing changes. So what, we, what our aim is uh, at this appointment is to adjust the occlusion before we let the patient go with the denture. We, want the, uh, we don't want the tissues to adapt to uh, occlusal differences. We want the occlusion to be uh, absolutely perfect before the, the patient starts wearing the denture because unfortunately tissue will adapt to uh, some occlusal discrepancies uh, and this is to the detriment of the tissue ultimately. So what we do clinically is this. We put the dentures back onto the articulator with the same condylar and sizal determinants that we had before. So what we must do is we must put the upper back on the instrument according to our faceball registration. And then our, our vertical dimension, of course, has already been established by the teeth themselves. So all we have to do then is take a new um, interocclusal wax check by percentric relation and then transfer that to the articulator uh, in relation to the upper and then do the selective grinding that we talked about a few minutes ago in the lecture. That's what we do clinically. We're going to do a little differently in this exercise. Now there's one thing I should talk about we did not mention before and that is how to transfer the maxillary denture in the faceball relationship so we don't have to take a new face bow after processing. And this can be done uh, relatively easily. And let me demonstrate that now. This is, a, this is a case where the wax denture is completed. The lower has simply been taken off. Now at this point, so we don't have to take a new face bow transfer from the patient. All we need to do is somehow uh, attach an index of the teeth to the lower part of the articulator so we can put the process denture back in its proper relationship to the opening axis of the condyles. So the first thing we do is simply take a new ring and place it on the articulator. Make sure it's all the way down. And then one easy method is to simply take a small drinking cup and cut part of the top off and you'll notice that these do fit over the ring quite nicely. And we cut it down only to the point that when we close the articulator, it becomes just short of the cup itself. Now the next step, of course, is quite obvious. That is, we simply pour a mixture of impression plaster into the cup so it, it, it gets into the undercuts of the ring. And then the excess comes over the top of the cup we simply lower the denture onto the wet plaster until the pin touches and let it set. And then the case is opened and the lower mechanism is taken off. Now I have made one ahead of time, so what I will do here is simply show you how it goes back together. And we'll take the lower off once again. And at this time, of course, let's take the upper off because actually uh, after, that, uh, after that step, we actually process the upper denture. So now let's consider this the processed denture that we have back. 
and we want to put this back on the articulator correctly. So here's the mechanism that we just made to do this. Very simple to do and it's very time consuming. Uh, consuming. We do not have to make another faceball registration from the patient. So this simply goes back onto the articulator like so. Now the completed denture You can tell by the, the way the teeth join the, uh, join the plaster that it fits very well. And then what we do is block out the undercuts in the upper denture. Now some of you have asked questions about this. If we lose our master cast, how can we remount a denture? And this will be where this is demonstrated. We block out the undercuts and then we put a new ring on the upper and make a mix of impression plaster. Don't use stone because it will be very difficult to get out of the finished denture. Mix up the plaster, put it on this surface, and put it on this surface, and then once again, close the articulator, making sure that the pin touches, and then letting the uh, plaster set, making sure that we don't, we don't get down onto the teeth because we do have to separate the denture from the plaster by hand when we're finished. But this is just a simple way by making this um, index, a simple way to maintain your faceball registration. Now everything that I have said now deals with what we do clinically and so I wanted you to be familiar with that uh, next year when you work with your first patient. Now for our exercise we have some differences and I think to make it more simple and less time consuming we're going to change the uh, method a little bit but I want you to understand that that this is we can't do this clinically that should be obvious and it's just for this exercise. Now at this time, you all have a lower denture in wax. These have not been processed. But they should be able to be removed from your um, master cast. If not, it's not necessary that it be done at this time. But we all have the lower attached to the master cast, which has been mounted. This relationship has not changed yet. So for the first step, just leave the lower exactly the way it is. Now also at the same time, you all have the processed maxillary denture. Now instead of making a new wax registration, occlusal registration from the mannequin, for this course, in order not to mutilate the occlusion, what I would prefer doing, or having you do, is simply hand articulate the upper to the lower. And then after it's hand articulated into maximum intercuspation, we will loot these together with sticky wax, remove the undercut in the upper part of the denture with some blockout, I'll, I'll show you that in a moment, and then go through the step that I had just demonstrated. Putting a new ring on top of the articulator and impression plaster, close it down like this, and we have reestablished a mounting on the articulator in the relationship uh, that they were in when we set the teeth. So I think I will demonstrate that now. This is an uh, exercise that should not be time consuming, so I think if it's, if it's demonstrated, uh, that would be helpful. Now the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that my teeth are in maximum intercuspation. And we are doing this in preparation for our selective grinding pr procedure. So in this case, I'm, I'm heating up just a little bit of sticky wax, and keep this very minimal. Don't run it down onto your uh, waxed lower denture. Just enough to make sure that the teeth don't shift when we uh, add our plaster in a, in a couple of moments. And you only need the sticky wax in a couple of spots. Give it a chance to cool. And then we will go to the other side and do exactly the same thing. Now before we add plaster to this upper denture, it is important that we remove or don't put the plaster in large undercuts. In this particular case, in the technique case, we don't have large undercuts, but it would be much easier if we did remove that little bit of undercut we had in the labial vestibule of the upper. And you should all be familiar with that now. And what I'm going to demonstrate in just a second here is uh, not by using wax or anything, but just by using a little wet asbestos to block out that undercut before we pour the plaster. 
Now at this point, that has been looted together. And make one last check to make sure that the occlusion looks proper to you. If it's not, do this step over again because this will affect the uh, ultimate configuration of the occlusion. We're going to do our selective grinding from this procedure. Now I'm going to turn the denture this way a little bit so you can see the area I'm talking about. We have a very small undercut in this case, as you remember, in the labial uh, vestibule area. So with a small strip of asbestos, in fact, this is the type used for casting. I'm going to only use half of the width of that. Oh, well, you can't see that. I'm simply dipping it in water for just a second. That's wetted now. And then in the labial portion, and this can be easy, uh, done easier before you add it to the lower part of the denture, I suppose. I'm simply placing this in the labial area and adapting it over the front so it just stays a little better. Now don't make this excessive because remember this has to be held well enough by the plaster so that it doesn't fall apart during our selective grinding. But it will help deflasking it by hand if we do block out this area. Now I'm doing this upside down, but this area should be well adapted. Don't have too much block out. I'm only, I only have one thickness of the asbestos strip in this case and that is plenty of thickness. Now you notice in this particular case that there are no undercuts uh, from this area back, as you remember. There are no undercuts. The only undercut in the case is in the anterior region. So at this point, we are ready for the final step, and that is to add our a plaster. So I'm going to mix up a little plaster and demonstrate this, this last step and show you what your case should look like prior to beginning the selective grinding technique. Now remember, our vertical dimension has already been determined. We don't have to worry about that anymore. The centric relation record, we do. That's why we want maximum intercuspation in this case. Normally, we do this from the mouth, but for this exercise, there is a variation. I hope you see that distinction. Now at this point, I'm going to add a little to the ring first. And then we add material right into the denture itself. Let it flow all the way in. Make sure we've got enough. And we do. All we have to do first is just catch it. I'm going to add a little more, but I'm setting very, very rapidly here. Now we just close it down, making sure that the pin touches. Now, if you haven't got enough plaster, you've got, just got enough to catch, then I would advise taking a couple more seconds after this initial set and putting a little more plaster for the mounting to make sure that uh, we have enough strength as we do our selective grinding. And at this time, it is a good idea if you have brought the plaster down over the borders of the denture uh, to remove that. And you see what I'm doing here. I'm exposing the border of the denture, so when I uh, come to separating this new mounting from the denture, I know where the borders are and it will be much easier to deflask the, uh, the denture. Now at this point, we simply add a little more plaster if we think that it is too weak here. And then by removing the uh, small spots of uh, sticky wax, the articulator should be opened and closed in the same relationship it was before it was processed. And it's at, that, at this point that we can uh, begin to look at the occlusion in centric relation and all the excursions and uh, start our selective grinding procedure to uh, refine the occlusion at this time. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.